typically when I listen to music, I can be really hooked on a song solely from its powerful entrance. Whether it's from a really interesting drum groove like the Egg Emperor theme from Sonic Heroes, or even a really catchy guitar line like Persona 5's Life Will Change. It's always important for a song to start off strong in order to leave a lasting impression on the listener, but I think it's also equally as important to end off a song just as strong. And that's where cadences come in. A cadence is the ending of a piece or phrase through the use of specific chords. However, each of them need to follow specific guidelines in order to work. There are four different types of chords that you're going to typically learn in a music theory class. Authentic, half, deceptive, and plagal, and they're all actually used pretty frequently throughout video game music. Before we begin, I just want to say that if you enjoy my content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get updated on whenever I upload a new video. At the time of recording this, I just hit 400 subs, thanks for that by the way, and I'd love to try and get to 500 by the end of 2020. So if you all can help out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. But don't forget to like the video and comment on what you thought of it. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos, so if you guys want to see a video on a specific game or song, let me know. Okay, let's get into the cadences. The most common cadence that you'll run into in music is known as the authentic cadence, which is when we conclude a piece by going from the dominant, or the 5 chord, to the tonic, the 1 chord. By using this cadence, we're leaving the listener with a very strong sense of resolution due to the tonic chord creating a lot of tension when played. So moving from the dominant to the tonic gives us a resolution where we feel as if we're at home. This can even be built upon by adding a 7th to the dominant in order to make the cadence sound even more resolved. Listen to the difference between adding and not adding a 7th to the dominant. You'll actually be surprised at how big the difference is. An excellent example of a video game piece using an authentic cadence is the piece Warmth and Kindness from Professor Layton and the Osron Legacy, which is the game that I actually really want to get into soon. Even though the song repeats, the measure before it loops back to the beginning can definitely be considered an ending point for the piece overall. If we look at the overall key of the piece, it's in the key of B-flat major. So we need to find an F chord, because that's the fifth scale degree in B-flat, and it needs this transition to B-flat. And luckily we do actually have that. If you look at the last few measures, you can see that we're going from a root position F major chord to the tonic B flat major. So this meets some, but not all of the requirements of being an authentic cadence. More on that later though. If you want to be technical, Authentic cadences can also follow the progression of 4 to 5 to 1, which is actually used in this piece as well, where we go from the subdominant, E flat, to F, and then to B flat. We can also find an authentic cadence in the iconic song Snake Eater from Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Shoutouts to my boy Ethan for helping me out with this one. Uh, things did not go so well when I first started using this song for a different entry on the list. I don't think notating this on piano is going to do the chords justice, but in order to slim things down, because the actual notation that I was going to refer to, which was by Sir Siegfried on MuseScore, is very big. So I'm going to be using the notes from that, on piano in order to make this a lot more compact. Key signature wise, we're in the key of F sharp minor. So in this scenario, we need to look for a progression of C sharp to F sharp. Now, if we look towards the end of measure 63, we have this big quarter note triplet shared between what would be the trumpets and trombones with the final notes resulting in an augmented C sharp chord, which then moves to this very heavily spicy F sharp chord. Now, like I was saying before, I at first didn't think that this was a tonic chord because of how dissonant it sounds, but a majority of the notes that are in this big chord are ones that you would find in an F-sharp chord, hereby leaving us with an authentic cadence. I love the 
irony of the cadence in this song. Because to me, just from the sound of it, I get this chord that plays at the end of a spy theme kind of vibe. Like with Henry Mancini's Pink Panther or Peter Gunn theme. It gives off this feeling that your adventure isn't quite over yet, but the song itself is. It's a nice hint of symbolism to the player. Except in this case, you're not really a spy, you're a soldier tracking down your boss who's a spy. See how it all connects? Now, if you recall, I said that there are four main cadences, but there are actually a lot of variations on those cadences as well. With the authentic cadence, we have two. The perfect authentic cadence and the imperfect authentic cadence. The biggest way to determine if we have either one is through chord inversions. If one of the two chords is restructured in any way, and the one chord doesn't have the tonic as its highest and lowest notes, then it's automatically going to be an imperfect authentic cadence. In order for the cadence to be perfect, it just needs to abide by those rules. So now that we have a better understanding of the two authentic cadences, let's relook at Warmth and Kindness and Snake Eater again to see what kinds of authentic cadences they have. So going back to Warmth and Kindness, looking at measures 29 and 30, we have a root position chord for our subdominant and dominant chords, but we do run into a problem in the last measure. Once we hit measure 31, we have a B flat that's being held in the right hand of the piano from measure 30, and then we get this arpeggiated tonic chord in the left hand ending on a high D natural. Since we're landing on the mediant here, that means that Warmth and Kindness's last chord ends on a 1-6, or a first inversion chord, meaning that we do actually end on an imperfect authentic cadence. There's actually another cadence that we can talk about, which is an extension to the imperfect authentic cadence called the evaded cadence. On his website, Robert Kelly writes, The evaded cadence resembles a perfect cadence through the cadential dominant. In an evaded cadence, the chord that follows the cadential dominant is usually a 1-6 chord, or whatever chord began the original cadential progression. The dominant chord in an evaded cadence is typically in third inversion, transitioning to the tonic chord, which is in first inversion. So while warmth and kindness doesn't quite fit the criteria for an evaded cadence, let's change the notation around so that it does meet the criteria and see how it sounds. Snake Eater's cadence is a bit different, actually. If we look at the quarter note triplet, we see that we have a lot of Cs, but the lowest note is actually C, meaning that we're in root position. And then we transition to that crunchy F-sharp chord, which has F-sharp being played as the lowest and highest notes. Since neither of the two chords are inverted, and the final chord has the tonic being played as the lowest and highest notes in the chord, Snake Eater actually ends with a perfect authentic cadence. The next cadence we're going to look at is the half cadence, which is when any chord transitions to the dominant chord. These are definitely weaker than authentic cadences because it doesn't give us a sense of resolution. It leaves us wanting more so that we can get that resolution. So because of that, it's very rare to see pieces end on this kind of a cadence. An example of this is from one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite video games, Id Serenity from Fire Emblem Awakening. This one's a little bit more complicated though as the chords in the final measure are the submediant and dominant of the original key A flat. As you can see, in the left hand of the piano we have an A flat and F, with an F in the right hand, which tells us that we have an F minor chord, and then we move to a G and E flat in the left hand, and another E flat in the right hand, which tells us that we have an E flat chord. However, we actually modulate to C major at measure 28, so what we have doesn't quite act as a half cadence in C major, but a half cadence in A-flat major in order to help us transition back to the original key.
Now listen to the piece from the modulation to C major to hear how that half cadence helps us transition back to the beginning. There's a lot of flat symbols throughout in order to make the transition seem a lot more natural. Now, one of the more interesting cadences we have is the deceptive cadence. Shoutouts to VideoGameMusicAcademy.com for this one. I was going to use a different song, but then I realized that the ending chord is just very dissonant. <laughs> Snake <eater. laughs> As the name implies, these are not going to sound very resolute. These are actually the exact opposite of half cadences, where we go from the dominant chord to anything but the tonic. As I mentioned before, the authentic cadence is the strongest sounding cadence because of the tension and release that it exudes. So when we're sitting on our dominant chord, we're anticipating the transition to the tonic, but instead we're caught by surprise and end on a chord that we don't expect. This is used excellently in the main theme of Final Fantasy VII, where Nobuo Uematsu makes use of the common 5-6 cadence. This is actually a pretty tricky cadence to catch because it doesn't sound like a deceptive cadence at first. The main theme of the game is actually ultimately in the key of G major, but transitioning from the 5 to the 6 leaves us with an E minor chord, which just so happens to be the relative minor of the piece. So the deceptive cadence sounds a lot more natural than you expect. One of the things that also throws salt in the wound is that we hit that E minor chord and the first note that's played in the melody is G, the tonic. So that too helps make the cadence sound a lot more natural. Listen to the difference between the 5 to 6 progression and the 5 to 1 progression as if this was an authentic cadence. Now, let's conclude with the final cadence, the plagal cadence. I need to make a shout out to my buddy Mario real quick though for helping me out with this because I was pulling my hair out trying to find a song with this kind of cadence. And thanks to him, we were actually able to find a few, but I'm gonna be sticking with one because I don't want the video to go for too long. Plagal cadences are probably the least common cadence that you'll see in music today, mainly because they're used in a lot of religious music like hymns. The plagal cadence is notated as a subdominant moving to the tonic chord. This can also be done with a 2 to 1 progression, but the most common usage is the subdominant to the tonic, or 4 to 1. They're often referred to as the Amen cadence, since the subdominant to the tonic is typically the chords used when singing Amen at the end of a hymn. It's not as strong as an authentic cadence because the 4 chord doesn't provide as much tension as the dominant, but it still provides some nice resolution. One of the pieces that this can be found in is Dragon Quest VIII's Healed by the Hymn, which is oddly fitting because of how typical you see plagal cadences in church music. So looking at the last few measures, we can actually see that we're in the key of G major and then alternating between the tonic and the dominant D. But then we're hit with this second inversion C major chord with the notes of a C major triad being played in quarter note triplets in the bass, finally transitioning to our tonic, a G major triad. Since C is the fourth scale degree in the key of G, this leaves us with a plagal cadence. Now the most likely reason why the C chord was inverted is because C major and G major share the note G between the two chords. So setting the bottom note of the C chord as the root of the incoming tonic chord doesn't require a lot of movement between the two 
since C and E are just one white key away from B and D, the other notes that make up a G major triad. Listen to the difference between the C chord in root position versus it being in second inversion. Well, hopefully you guys learned something today about the different cadences in video game music. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and commented what you thought about the video. And if there's other songs with cadences that I might have missed, drop them in the comments below. I did want to mention Terra's theme from Final Fantasy VI having a plagal cadence, but like I said earlier, I didn't want the video to go on for too long, so I'm going to talk about it here. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video and want to see more of my content, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of whenever I upload a new video. Like I said, I'm really trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of 2020, so I, it would really just make my day if you guys could help me out with that. I'd really appreciate it. But if you want updates on YouTube and or Twitch, then I highly recommend following me on Twitter and Facebook to keep up with everything. And with that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.